In our previous video, we talked about prototyping with snaps using the ProGrid system. Now, let's take a look at how we can modify snaps assets by changing their assigned materials. We'll also learn how to edit topology directly in Unity using the ProBuilder package. Using what we've learned, we'll make a custom prop and make sure that it is consistent with the rest of our level. Let's get started. As mentioned, we will be using ProBuilder to edit our assets. You can find more information about the package and where to get it on our Snaps blog post linked in the description below. We will also be covering quite a bit of the ProBuilder toolkit, giving you all the necessary skills for basic 3D modeling in Unity. In the previous video, we were going for a level with a modern feel to it, and we used some of the office and industrial props to do so. There's currently an office chair in this level, but that's not very fun. Let's see how we can turn it into a glorious gaming chair instead. To begin, we need to make our meshes editable with ProBuilder. To do so, make sure you are in ProBuilder's object mode, then go to Tools, ProBuilder, Object, ProBuilderize. Now we can edit the topology of the model, assign new materials, and much more. After looking at some references of what a gaming chair might look like, we get an idea of the general shape of our object. We'll make the back of our chair taller and it will have a rounded headrest. There will also be two holes in the backrest where you'd usually attach a pillow. The sides of the backrest will also have a wing-like shape. We always start by working on the bigger shapes. Let's go into face mode and select the top and bottom polygons on the backrest. Then we can switch to the scale tool and use it to pull our top and bottom polygons further apart. After that, we can use the move tool to better position the faces individually. If you notice that scaling doesn't quite work as intended, make sure you are using the center of your selections as the tool handle position. You should also be operating in local mode. One thing we can notice is that we don't have enough detail on the top part of the chair in order to shape our headrest properly. To fix that, we can go into edge mode and use the insert edge loop tool to add two new edge loops along the top of our chair. We can then grab the two new edges at the top of the back and move them up, giving us a more rounded shape. Now, let's work on the sides of the chair. We can grab two of our outward edges and scale them apart. However, we will need to add some new edge loops to round these off as well. We should also pull the wings slightly forward, like so. Now it's time to make the holes in the back. For this, we'll need a few new tools. What we can do here is split some of our existing quad geometry into triangles, then delete those faces and bridge the formed gap with new polygons. To begin, we'll need to pull some of the geometry in the middle of our backrest upwards. After that, select the four diagonally placed faces on both the front and back of the chair and press Triangulate Faces in our ProBuilder panel to see the result. As you can see, some of the new triangles are facing the wrong way. We can fix this by undoing our division and deselecting the faces which triangulate incorrectly. Now we'll triangulate again only on one side of the mesh. After that, we can use the Flip Face Edge tool on the other set of polygons. If we triangulate those faces now, you'll see the edge has now been flipped correctly. Now we can select our new triangles and use Delete Faces to form a gap. Once that's done, we can go around the newly formed mesh holes in Edge Mode, selecting pairs of faces from the front and back and using the Bridge Edges tool.
and here we have our new chair model. There are a few extra things we can do with ProBuilder. First, we can assign some new materials to the different parts of our chair. You can use any materials already in your project or create a new one to suit your needs. I will use a simple black material for most of the body of the chair and a white one to put some accent on parts of it. We can do all of this through ProBuilder's Material Editor. You can find it under Tools, ProBuilder, Editors, Open Material Editor. Here, you can either assign new materials to your selection manually, or you can assign materials to be used with hotkeys. I'll assign my black and white material to two different hotkeys. Now, I'll make all of the chair black first by dragging a selection box over it in face mode, ensuring that the Select Hidden option is set to on. After that, I'll select some individual faces that I want to be white and assign it with my other hotkey. Another great feature of ProBuilder is working with smoothing groups. Smoothing groups can help you define which parts of your low poly model are meant to look rounded and which should have a hard edge instead. If two faces next to each other are assigned the same group, the shading transition between them will appear rounded. Let's open the editor by going to Tools, ProBuilder, Editors, Open Smoothing Editor. We can use this to make the back and seat of our chair appear more rounded. We can also do that for some other parts, like the hydraulic cylinders. First, select our entire chair and remove any smoothing groups it currently has by pressing the corresponding button in the smoothing editor. Next, we can select all the polygons of our backrest and seat and assign it to the same smoothing group. You can now see the edges of the back appear to be more rounded even though we have very little geometry there. This can give us a better idea of how our high poly asset should look like if we ever decide to make one in the future. Next, we can assign new smoothing groups to our chair's legs, support, and hydraulics unit. And now we're done with editing our asset. Here's how the office chair looks next to our new glorious gaming chair. I think we did pretty well. Now you know all about editing Snap's assets to fit your needs. You've also learned to create 3D models from scratch using the ProBuilder Toolkit. Have fun using your new skills. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, stay tuned for more.